Good day, folks, and welcome to the IT Way. My name is Joan, and today we're going to continue with a series of videos on how to make the basic configuration in the Meraki devices. In the previous video, you can see it here. We went through the basics of how to add the device to the network, how to bring it online, and then how to make the basic configurations for our firewall. In this video, we're going to continue with the series with the switches. So we're going to bring the switch, we're going to connect the switch below the max, we're going to see the structure and the topology, how it looks like, and we're going to make the basic configurations on the switch. So stay tuned. If you want to know more about troubleshooting and configuration steps, you can go to this link, which we have the playlist of the Cisco Meraki training guide for you to go from zero to hero with our weekly videos updated over there. Here, we're going to use the 200 series, but if you have the 100, 120, or even the big ones of the layer 3, 300, 400, it can be used exactly the same. So at the end, the dashboard configuration is the same one. So regardless of the device that you have, this can be useful for you. In this video, we're going to start the configuration, adding the device to the network. So if you haven't added a device to the inventory or even create organization, you can go here to this video where it's going to show you the introduction part or how is the dashboard overview, how to create your account, and how to add the device to the inventory. After that, you can come back here, and then we're going to continue configuring the device. So let's get to it, and let's see how to configure the switch. Now that we are in the dashboard, the first thing that we will do is add the switch to the network. We already know that we have the network to Meraki stack with the security appliance. So we're going to build on top of that and we're going to add the network. So remember to go to the previous video if you haven't added the device to the switch to the inventory yet, because we're going to start on top of that. So now that we know that our switch is in the inventory, we're going to look for it. We're going to check the box. It's going to be this switch. I name it just switch rack. And then in the actions, change the network assignment to the one that we want, the rack stack. So we're adding this switch to the network. The changes is successful. And then here in the Meraki stack, we're gonna have not just the security appliance, but we're gonna have the switch tab as well. Having this switch stack, we can go to the switches just to ensure that our switch is there. You're gonna see the list of all the switches that we have available. Right now it's just this one. So you can come here and if you wanna add or change the name that comes as a default, you can just come here and change the name. Here we have so far that this is the device that we have. Depending of if this is the first time or the second time that you're adding your switch, you can have some previous information here, but don't worry about that. Now we know that the device is added to the network. The next piece is gonna be creating the connection between the security appliance and the switch. Right now we can make some previous configuration just to ensure that this switch is able to reach out to the network. If you go to the first port, everything is gonna be as a default, strong using native VLAN one, allow all VLANs, and that's okay. But we have to ensure that the port where we're gonna connect this switch, it's able, is up, is working, and it's online and then it's able to provide an IP address to this switch. So let's say that I want to connect it to the port number three. Right now I can see that yes, it's trying Native VLAN 1 and it's allowing all VLANs. Native VLAN 1 is our internal clients. So here there, we have a doubt because we have three main VLANs, the internal clients, the servers, and the guests. So in this case, since we're going to start adding networking devices, there are some people that can add these devices as the service VLAN, or they're going to see other people a different approach. They're going to use a new VLAN for management. So we can try that. So let's try create this as management. We're going to use the same IP addresses that we're using. And let's create just one VLAN for management. With that VLAN, we're going to add all our networking devices that we're going to have in the future. Now the switch, but after that, we're going to have the cameras, we're going to have the access points, and so on. So we're going to use this one as our management VLAN. So since I want to connect my switch in port 3, I'm going to change this trunk. I'm going to leave as a trunk. The native VLAN is going to be 1 as well, but I'm going to have all VLANs that is going to be configured. Depending on the way that you want to configure this, now that I know for sure that this switch 
and it's going to be connected in this port and I want the VLAN 4 as a management, I can change that to VLAN 4. So once the switch connected to the port, it's going to get that IP address. If this is a little bit complicated for you, I'm going to put a documentation in the description box where you can see what is the difference between the native VLAN, what is a VLAN in access, a port in access, or trunk, and what is the difference between them. So feel free to go there and have a more in-depth approach about these two topics. We know for sure that now it's a trunk native VLAN 4. We just have to connect the switch. So let's go back to the hardware and let's connect the two devices together. Now that we know that Cisco Meraki Security Appliance is online and reachable, we're going to connect our switch in the LAN side of the Max to go to the internet through the Max. With that, the switch will get an IP address in the native VLAN 4. So the DHCP server is already on as a default in the VLAN 4 and it's going to be located on the Max. So the Max is going to provide that IP address to the switch. And the switch will use the port one as an uplink from now on. After it is connected, it should get an IP address and it should talk to the cloud and it should be that white color in the LED switch power button that you can see over there. Going back to the dashboard in the switch side, if you go to the switch, sometimes since this is a new implementation, you can see that green button in the port and you see that it's completely reachable, but you still see this information. This is just because the dashboard is not gonna update automatically. You just have to refresh the page and everything should be back to normal. Now you can see it. Here is gonna take a little bit of time for you to refresh all this information. Just give it a few more minutes. But now the main part is that the Port, you see that it's green, it means that the home link is there, and you can see the arrow just pointing out to the top, which is mean that that's the home link from this switch. Clicking here, now that it's online, we can make this change just to reflect the same thing that we can configure in the address and VLAN section. Here, we know for sure that what we want is the native VLAN 4, and it's going to be allowed all VLANs. We can leave all the other parts, fine. We can refresh the page again to see the changes. So here you can see the new IP address. You see how it changed. If you wanted to establish specific static IP address, you have this option here. Right now as a default, it comes for DHCP. So here you can see something important. It's gonna gradually change. Sometimes it takes more time than usual. But here you can see that is the proper IP address, but not the VLAN. So the gateway of the DNS is proper, is the same one, it's the correct one, but not the VLAN. If you refresh again, you're gonna see the change that is gonna go through VLAN 4. So it takes some time. Now we're gonna go through the main parts of the basic configuration of the switch. You know how to configure the ports. So you just have to come here or come here. And if you have to connect like a device over there in VLAN 2, you can go and change it just to access, put in VLAN 2. And now that device and that port is ready to be connected there. The same thing in other parts. If you want to connect another switch and you want to have the same configuration as this one, if you want to have the switch in the VLAN 4 as well, allow all VLANs or allow just a number of VLANs, you can configure in that way. And now that, that port is ready to use. One main part of this uh, configuration of the switches is the ACL. If you go to the ACL section, you have almost the same thing as the layer three firewall rules in the security appliance. Here, you can have the same information. Denial of access, this is gonna be your, the same as ACL list. The APV4, APV6, you can have a UDP, TCP, or any traffic with a source and a destination, as well with the ports, source and destination, and the VLAN. So with that, what it's taking is that firewall, layer three firewall rule from the security appliance all the way down to the switch level. The use case of this is gonna depend on your network. If you have a lot of devices, a lot of traffic traversing the MX, and you wanna reduce that low of checking in every traffic, the layer three firewall rule, you can put it here. As long as you know that every traffic that you need to police or block is gonna be passing through that switch over the number of switches. It is gonna depend on the way that you wanna play around. But it's almost the same applications in this case. The next one is the access policy. So it's gonna depend of what is the traffic of the applications that you have. If you wanna 
having access policy to one specific port, let's see access policy number one. I'm going to use my radio server just to authenticate my clients. If you don't know how to use this radio server authentication, it's the same thing in the access points as well. I'm going to have the link for you that is there where you can go through the radius configuration and troubleshooting aspect as well. After you have this configuration, let's talk, let's say that we want to create one. We're going to put the MRI authentication and we're going to save the changes. After this one is safe, you just have to go to the ports. I'd like to go through the switch ports in the switch overview page and not the switch port interface. Uh, I'm going to show you why. Here, this is the interface, right? You can click on one of this. I like this part because if I want to configure just one port, I will go through this interface because it's clear all the configuration that it has. But if you want to configure different or several ports at the same time, the switch port web page is way better. Here in this case, what we will do is create this access policy that we add and we're going to create it here. Here you can add that access policy. You save the changes and now everything and any device that is connected here, it has to go through that authentication that we set up. Port schedules is if you want to have like a port scheduled for some period of time, depending on the way that you're going to work, you can add it here. You have all the schedules for every day and you can select it and change it. The switch settings is one of the most important parts when you have several switches in the same network to change the STP priority on each kind of the switches. So you can change it here. If you want to add any quality of service, if you have some specific applications, then it's priority or voice, the multicast if you have it, the MTU and the different power supplies. Since we have the MS200s, we are not gonna use that since we have this small switch and just one switch, but there you go. And the other part is the stage upgrades. This is very useful if you have several switches as well. You can select the time when to schedule that firmware and it's gonna be one by one and not all the switches at the same time. With that information, we can cover the main part on aspects of how to create basic configuration for your switch the first time that you have it. And that's how you connect and configure a switch under the MX with the basic configurations. If you're interested to know what devices I use for the lab or what is the rack that I have behind me or every lab that I have set up, I put everything in the comments below for you to check out as well. If you'd like to know more about what is next, how you configure the access point, how you configure the cameras, we're going to continue doing these kind of videos. So stay tuned for the next videos that are coming up. If you'd like to know more about the configuration and steps, any features that are coming up, or even troubleshooting tips, how to configure and automate your network, you can have here the training list for all the videos that we are coming up weekly in this channel. And if you'd like to know more, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel and click the notification button for you to have any alarms when we have a new video. Something else, if you have to stay up to date to so the Meraki updates that are bringing to the table, new firmware, new products, new features, we have our monthly updates in the Meraki highlights that you can find here as well in the description below. And that's how you configure the switches in the Meraki way. See you the next one.